Nothing that matters as the glory of our nation should be remembered ever. Nothing that matters give us the, you know, the example of looking for the truth. They were true to their word. Thanks be to God for the gift of the martyrs. It's a great privilege for me to be on that land where Uganda martyrs have first received their catechesis. You know, they are saints who live pure, holy lives. Uganda matters are our prestige in this country. Every year on 3rd June, Christians from different parts of the world flock Uganda for a pilgrimage at Namgongo to honor the Uganda martyrs who died for their religion. This practice goes back to 1920 when the first pilgrims went there. They were coordinated by Father Stephen Walters, who could now be referred to as the father of pilgrimage to Namgongo. Uganda welcomes Pope Francis to the 50 year celebration of canonization of Uganda matters. Welcome to Uganda! Welcome to Uganda! Welcome to Uganda! The introduction of Christianity in Uganda started with a letter sent to England by the famous explorer Henry Morton Stanley. In April 1875, the dynamic Henry Morton Stanley set foot in Buganda and met with Kabaka Mutesa I. Stanley was highly impressed by Mutesa and the organization of his kingdom. While Mutesa was enthused by Stanley's tales of England, his journey, and the Christian religion. Mutesa's interests were partly political, aimed at using the white men to avert the threat of invasion to his kingdom from Egypt in the north. By his reckoning, Christianity was the price he had to pay for his protection. Kabaka Mutesa I was a great king. He had a vision for Buganda, he had a vision for the country as Uganda. And the actual fact, it is now the foundation on which Uganda is really built. This is a king who wrote to Queen Victoria asking for Europeans to come here First of all, to bring development in the kingdom, to bring education, as well as to come and teach our people here religion. Three years after the dispatch of Mutesa's letter, missionaries from the Church Missionary Society arrived in Buganda. Hopped on their heels were the Catholic fathers who arrived in Buganda in 1879. The youngest of these white fathers was Samuel Liddell, a man that played an important role in the lives of the Uganda martyrs. He was a bit of a prisoner, you know, when he arrived here, the Kabaka never wanted him to go anywhere else except stay here and almost report to the royal court every day. In the royal court, they had those pages. Often he had to wait for hours in order to have an interview, and the Kabaka had called him, but he made him wait for an hour, two hours, three hours sometimes. So he had more and more talks with those pages. They start to like him. He used that occasion too, to start teaching them, and they taught him Luganda. So the relation grew. And when he had to work, you know, he would, they would gladly come and give a helping hand here with the building up of uh, Nabulagala. The missionaries were here from 1879 to 1882. Uh, now, during that time, they did a lot. Uh, at that time, they were not uh, they were not allowed to go out uh, of uh, of this uh, of Kampala of Rubaga to go out and teach religion. But they were teaching from here, uh, from this. Uh, so the, cat the, the, the the those who the catechumens uh, were coming here. But they were also going to the uh, palace uh, and every day Mapera, almost every other day Mapera was supposed to go there and also he was using that occasion uh, also to teach about uh, the, Cath the, uh, uh, the Catholic faith. 
the very first baptisms here in the Uganda were here at Nabulagala. When the missionaries arrived here in 1879, they started instructing people in matters religious. 27th of March, 1880, four Ugandans were baptized here. And they were Paul Narubandwa, Petro Chononikadamulira, Joseph Luanga, and Leo Kadu. It was on the 27th of March, 1880, which was Holy Saturday. Later, more baptisms took place here, and those included Joseph Mukasabali Kudembe, Matthias Murumba Kalemba, Luke Barnaba Kintu, and Andrea Kagwa. That was in 1882. What we see here is an illustration of what took place on the 25th of June, 1879, the very first mass in Uganda. When the missionaries arrived here, all of them, and they had the first mass on the 25th of June, immediately uh, they started a novena to uh, Our Lady. Uh, and this novena went up on the 2nd uh, of July, 1879. And on that day, uh, the missionaries, they dedicated their lives and their mission and also Uganda to Mother Mary. So uh, we put up this grotto uh, in memory of that. This prayer you see here uh, was inspired by the, uh, uh, the words which were used uh, in the prayer that the missionaries used on that uh, uh, day, the 2nd uh, of July, uh, 1879. In this prayer, uh, well, of course, we ask uh, Mother Mary to protect us uh, from all types of diseases, accidents, wars, uh, and even uh, oppression. And at the same time, we ask Mother Mary uh, to, uh, to direct us, to lead us, so as to uh, follow her son, Jesus Christ, uh, and then also uh, to put all our hearts uh, in those things that will uh, lead us to uh, eternal life. Father Ludell attracted some of the boys and the young men to attend his catechism classes. By 1882, rumor had it that Kabaka Mutesa had intended to persecute the Christian converts by burning them. The White Fathers left Buganda to avert any such action. Joseph Mukasa Barikudembe then became the factual leader of the Catholic converts in Buganda, assisted by fellow pages John Maria Mose and Charles Ranga at the palace. Ill of health, Mutesa died on the 19th of October 1884 in the hands of his faithful servants, Joseph Balikudembe and John Marie Musei. He was succeeded to the throne by his 18-year-old son, Kabaka Mwanga II, a friendly fellow upon taking the throne. After receiving advice from Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe, he invited the White Brothers back to Buganda. On coming back, they never went back to Nabulagala, but Kabaka Mwanga gave them this plot uh, here and they started building here and uh, so one of the, the trees they planted uh, was this one. It is a tree which dates back uh, about 120 years ago. They planted many and also they speak of guava trees and others. So again this place here uh, Nalukolong has other historical events uh, uh, within the Catholic Church. Uh, surely it was here that uh, uh, evangelization uh, was free. Uh, people could come and go, uh, which was not the case, uh, for example, in Nabulagala. So here, uh, Mapera was free to evangelize. Uh, and then also it was here that women uh, started also coming uh, to learn with the missionaries. Because many of the women, they had learned the catechism with their brothers uh, in the homes, in the villages. But here then, they could come to the mission and they could be uh, taught catechism and then also the first baptism of the women uh, of uh, were here. And these were uh, Kalala Batude, uh, the wife of Andrea Kagwa, uh, Eugenia, and uh, Monica. 
but despite the invitation of the white furthers back to Uganda, the clouds that had gathered over the fate of Christians during Mutesa's reign were still disturbingly present. Mwanga, young in age and eager to assert his authority as the new monarchy, felt his grip on his subjects slip to the missionaries. <laughs> The untimely death of Mutesa I in 1884, just a few years after the arrival of the missionaries, left the kingdom in the hands of Kabakamwanga II. The Christian religion was received with much excitement by the converts, but it came with its own requirements. It denounced all the native religious behavior and practices as heathen and satanic. Therefore, joining it meant commitment to break away from the old lifestyle, make and adopt new alliances, and adjust to new moral and religious standards, adherence and allegiance. The new flock of believers are Abasomi, as they were called, therefore, were seemingly regarded as rebels who had transferred their loyalty to new religious systems, thus abandoning the old tribal traditions. The once lively, enthusiastic Mwanga II, in support of the missionaries, turned into an intolerant and vicious prosecutor of Christians and all foreigners. He felt with good cause that the powers and authority his predecessors had enjoyed were dwindling and had disintegrated under the influence of the missionaries and their converts. Mwanga too was determined to rid his kingdom of the new teaching and its followers. It was hardly a year after Mwanga's assumption on the throne that he ordered the execution of Yusuf Rugama, Mark Kakumba, and Noah Serwanga, the first three Christian martyrs who were killed at Busega, Natete, in January 31st, 1885. In October the same year, the Anglican bishop, James Huntington, dispatched to head the Eastern Equatorial Africa, headquartered in Buganda, was murdered on his way to Buganda. Mukasa Barikodembe, a senior advisor to the king and a Catholic convert, condemned Mwanga for ordering Huntington's death without giving him a chance to defend himself, as was customary. Mwanga was annoyed that Mukasa would question his actions and he had him arrested and killed. It was out of justice, out of mercy, out of concern, out of generosity that Joseph Mukasabali Kudembe risked his life when he went and knelt before the, the, the king, the Kabaka, to tell him that what he had ordered was not right. On the day, Bali Kudembe was condemned to death at Mengo, Kabaka, the king, the then king, recalled the words Joseph Kasabal Kudembe had used and said, Now, what did you tell me? Are we two kings here? I say this and you say that. He was martyred exactly here on the 15th of November, 1885. Mukasa became the first Catholic martyr when he was beheaded at Nachifugo. Munyuanyi. Mukasa bali kudembe. Uli mkwano kwange. Uli mfanfe. Sirina buwe nchu sachira gilo chasa wa sajaka baka wa Buganda. Andakite. 
Nirwachi to choose, sir. Banobachero pay. Bazebu ziku no kwa fe. Batulimba. Kapaka ye munye nye ya fe. Ya to many devil chin to chuna. Choose some, because I will go yogus on you are. Kuteka kuanti omusai gusigale mongalo zangi. Kajaka. Wali mkwano wangi nyo. Sisobola no mruli no gumo kuje mesa. Elisaba sadja. Atanagas, Sidimu Jim, Eddie Savasaja, Savasaja Mambi Dibacheru, Dibamina Kabi, Tabam Koseko Sam, Nature of Mambi, the Serajituka, Adiba Masima. The Kanagi did take it, take it all again, or no. Kukui samu moliro, lumi vitia kuba bunge. Ziki tizan kuka kanya nefum. Ulufanya mna kulanga sababu sija biyala kiti tu kurkasuke kumkomi. Mwenge. Bari kute. For the Christian converts, this was just the beginning of the reign of terror. Not to provoke the already enraged monarch, the pages attending catechism classes with Father Ludell, also known as Mapera among the locals, did so in secrecy. But such stealthy only bought them time. This fete was clearly written on the wall, stay the course and die O oh, abandon Christianity, and you may be, just may be, pardoned. The, the, the instruction of the missionaries was very precise and um, very deep for, for these uh, young Christians. And the missionaries had to make sure, before baptizing them, they had to make sure that if there's any persecution, are you prepared to give your lives? And they said yes, and they were true to their word. Between December of 1885 and May 1886, many more converts were murdered. At the time of the martyrdom, the palace of King Mwanga II was at Munyonyo. Munyonyo is very, very important for the church because the story of the martyrdom started from Munyonyo Palace. And that's where the king took the decision to have all Christians martyred. The site here was where he came out. We are told there used to be a big hut here where I used to sit. From where he would occasionally go to Bidiangugwe Islands for entertainment purposes, like swimming and hunting hippos. The precipitation of Mwanga's anger began on the 25th May, 1886, when he failed to shoot at any hippo at Bidiangugwe Island. On returning to Munyonyo, he found nobody to welcome him back since all the pages had gone to attend catechism classes at Nalukolongo. Arriving here at Mulungu, he finds a witch doctor stationed strategically. Remember, they used to wait to, to strategize themselves at a spot here because whenever he came back from the game, he would give some, some meat to them. This weak doctor is well stationed here, but this time he gets disappointed. The Kabaka too looks very frustrated. Now he tells him, the Kabaka narrates this ordeal, and the weak doctor tells him, it's the beginning 
of the complications. We, remember, we told you, Your Majesty, to send away the missionaries, uh, to kill these boys who keep associating themselves with them. It's just the beginning. Please do something. Looking around, very angry, he notices that there was Musa Mukasa within the vicinity. He said, you are the people disturbing me. You are the people now against me. So he orders that he gets butchered and they literally dismembered him here. Then Semguao, minutes later, arrives thinking he was returning at the proper time. No, this time he was very late. The king hit Semuguao on the back using his sword, Muwabutwa, which broke into two. On this very, very place, he uh, was beheaded and uh, cut, his body was cut into pieces and uh, remained here. Later on, people, they came and they got, collected all the remains and they buried them here. Every, every day, some people, they come here, they, they pray at this place, at this martyrdom spot. Saint Dionysio, Sebuguao, patron of choirs. Sebuguao was born in Lukumbi village, now Kasana Luero Diocese, Bulemezi County. He was born to Kajansi Sebuguao of the Edible Rat clan, Omusu, and Esther Maria Nsonga, a Musoga who was abducted from Busoga by Nkalubo while she was only five years old. Right from the start, Sebukwao was known to be an upright person. He was calm and prudent. Instructed and guided by Joseph Mukasabari Kudembe, Sebukwao grew more and more committed in faith, a thing that may explain why he dared to be baptized just hours after the death of Barikudembe on the 16th and 17th November 1885 by Father Mapera. At the age of 16, Sebu Guao was beheaded at around 9 a.m. at Munyonyo on the 26th May 1886, having been brutally tortured by Kabakamwanga himself the previous night and having spent the night at Impinga, Kalokole's cold cell. On the morning of 26 May 1886 at Munyonyo, just minutes after Charles Luanga had baptized Kizito, Mbaga Tuzinde, Javira, Mugaga and Karoli Weraba later spared. Kabaka Mwanga too sentenced Charles Luanga, Mugaga, Andrea Kagwa, Javira and others to death on 26th May 1886. Mukusinza, <laughs> And that day, when he called the, the subjects to ask, what can I do with these people? They are all rebelling against me. The answer from the elders was, kill them. We shall give, them, we shall give you other, other what? Other servants or other pigs. Ow. Oh. So that's why they were sentenced to death. And they were taken to Namugongo from Munyonyo. Uh, why Namugongo? Because Namugongo was an execution site of the kingdom. And people that were too bad used to be killed at Namugongo. These are too bad. One of the reasons is there's a king of kings. So there is another king higher than me. Too bad to be killed elsewhere. He should be taken to Namugongo. They say one wife, one husband. Too bad. Because here a man's prestige is to have as many wives as possible. You are too bad. 
because you are saying one God, but culturally we have several gods, two bad, and the two bad people used to be killed at Namugongo. But the matters belong to the too bad category. Later that afternoon, at around 2 p.m., under the directives of Katikiro Mukasa, he ordered for Andrea Kagwa's hand and head to be chopped off. We are at the spot of uh, Sende Endo Kagwa, the place where he was uh, killed. He's martyred on spot. Andrew Kagwa was a chief catechist and was in charge also of the band of the, um, of the king. And king liked him so much. When uh, King Mwanga II uh, sentenced to death uh, Christians, uh, Katikiro just approached uh, the king and said, you know, there's another Christian, another Catholic, very devoted one. You, you should also sentence him to death. He was not among those who were sentenced to death uh, in the uh, court uh, hall, let's say. Why Katekiro insisted so much on his death? Because he feared that Andrea might one day be made Katekiro since he was popular. The whole body was cut into pieces which were thrown all over. His only words were, my God. My God, my God. Uh, so on the grave of St. Andrew Kagwa was built this small chapel where people, they come and pray and uh, venerate also St. Andrew Kagwa, the patron saint, saint of uh, catechists and teachers. St. Andrea Kagwa of the Chigwere clan Andrea Kagwa or Kawa was born to Kawa Kabijenge, a chief under the county chief Chikukuri at Kochi village in Ugangazi. Kochi is today in Chibale district in Ukumi parish, Homer diocese. Andrea Kagwa was captured and brought to Uganda in 1869 to serve in the palace during the reign of Kabaka Mtesa I. While at Choli's home, Kagwa that enabled him to accommodate as many people as possible. After cutting off his hand, the executioners cut off his head. They sliced the body, throwing parts of Kagwa's body all over. He died calling upon God. Some other blood relatives of Andrea Kagwa are still with us. Some of them have mass every Sunday at Munyonyo Mata's Shrine. <laughs> Nganzali Bua, Mutabanywa Muganda we, Gobaita Salapium, Gobaita Dawdi Musoke, Gadawdi Musokazala Salapium Soke, Had Salapium Soke, Gazalanzi. Later that day, as they continued their journey to Namugongo at a place called Chamula, Posiano Ngondwe told the soldiers that it didn't make any sense to take him all the way to Namugongo since he wasn't going to change his mind about the Christian faith. So they beheaded him there and his whole body cut to pieces. Polisiano Ngondwe was the third to be martyred. Now as they move late in the evening where we are on the 26th of May 1886 Ponsiano Ngondwe is speared by Mukajanga. Spear him again. Huh? Both Catholics and Protestants intoned the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven. The soldiers got perturbed. <laughs> Even up to this moment, it was here that they started the prayer. Later, Ponsiano Ngondwe has his head cut off. Following day, a Protestant Reverend Ash found the head of the saint besides the road, but nobody else reported to have seen the body. It must have been eaten by wild animals or birds of the air. Saint Ponciano Ngondwe belonged to the white egret clan, Nyonyi. Ponciano Ngondwe was born at Bulamu in Chagwe County born to Birenge and his wife Mukomruanyi of the Buffalo clan Mbogo. His father presented him to the Kabaka. He was drafted in the militia as a page. In 1886, Ponsiano Ngondwe was falsely accused 
of stealing a cow from Mokajanga's heart. The chief executioner. The chief executioner's head of herdsmen stole the fattest cow from Mokajanga's crow and falsely accused Ngondwe of leaving it as a tax collection, something contrary to the Chiganda custom and punishable. Ngondwe was arrested immediately and put into Kimbale prison without trial by Mukajanga himself. Meanwhile, when he was being taken to Namgongo with fellow prisoner Abdul Aziz in the evening, they met Mukajanga, who sought to find out who of the two prisoners was a Christian. Posiano Ngondwe confessed to being a Christian. Then Mukajanga staggered up to Ngondwe and drove his spear into the heart of the gallant soldier who bravely stood to meet it. He died between the age of 35 and 40. St. Ponciano Ngondwe, pray for us. The following morning, on 27th May 1886, while on the holy journey to Namugongo execution site, when asked who wanted to be killed where Balikudembe had been killed, Bazek Keta immediately responded, Here I am. And he was thus speared several times hence muttered at Nachivubo on 27th November, 1886, at the age of 20. <laughs> He was spared here and he was beheaded. That was on the 27th of May, 1886. St. Athanasius, pray for us. St. Athanasius. which made him wake. He was the fourth martyr of the 20 that were killed during the great persecution of 1886. The very area in which Gonza Gagonza was speared has always been known as Lubao. It is also called in Nalia. Saint Gonza Gagonza, patron of prisoners. Gonza Gagonza was born to Prince Gonza Bato of the Ngabi Bushback clan from Busoga in the county of Bulamogi, but was captured while still very young from Bugonza in Busoga. Gonzaga at the time, Father Mapera and Amans arrived in Uganda in February 1879, was attending Islamic instructions, possibly intending to become a Muslim. In 1880, Menya and Namulavira taught the Catholic religion to Gonzaga secretly, and he started following the lessons. On 16th November 1885, Gonzaga was baptized by Father Mapera, just a day after the martyrdom of Joseph Mukasa Balikudembe. On the 26th May 1886, along with others, Gonzaga moved from Munyonyo after they had been sentenced to death by Kabakamwanga II. Shortly before their departure, Gonzaga bid farewell to his friend Nganda, saying bye-bye. I am moving to heaven. On the 26th May 1886, as they were heading to the execution site at Namugongo, the prisoners spent the night at Mengo. 
Gonzaga's health deteriorated. His legs were continuously sweating. On 27th May 1886, Muka ordered that Gonzaga be executed at the road junction of Rubahawo, where he was speared several times and his head cut off. <laughs> Omujulizi <laughs> On Monday 31st May at 7 a.m., the executioners reached the home of Banabachintu. Mbugano and his men said, We have come to arrest the Christians of Mitiana. <laughs> to this, Noah came out of the house saying, Here we are. The executioners, Kamani, speared Noah instantly several times and tied him on a mutuba tree and the dogs of the area fed on his blood and flesh. That uh, tent, that is the exact spot where Saint Noah Mawagari was speared. Saint Noah Mawagari, patron of workers, born at Nkazibugu near Lake Wamala, Singo County, Noah Mawagari was born to Musazi and Gabi clan Olugabi Oluto Bushba and his wife Valeria Mueme, again of the Ngabi clan around 1851. Nuamawagari got skilled in making clay pipes, plates, cups and the like. He was very much skilled in back cloth production, carpentry, animal skin tanning and making knives. While at Mukwenda's residence, Mawagari got in touch with Matia Mulumba who introduced him to the Christian faith. Nua Magali was baptized at Narukolongo by Father Mapera on 1st November 1885. He committed himself at enabling as many people as possible to embrace the Catholic faith. On the fateful day of his arrest, Nua Magali is said to have been at Manabachintu's home in Chiyenda. The church here, which is our cathedral, or the shrine, of the Uganda martyrs at Mitiana uh, was built in honor of these three martyrs. That is St. Matthias Mulumba, St. Luke Banabakintu, and uh, St. Noah Mawagari. This church, which is now the cathedral, was built in a unique way, as you can see. Those three arches are representative of the three martyrs of Mitiana. Banabachintu, patron saint of fishermen and students. Born at Ntolomwe 
in Butambala County, lying in the present day Mitiana Diocese. Banaba Chintu was born of Mukwaga of the Langfish Clan and Kutaviza of the Creeping Plant Clan. The Langfish Clan, a Mamba, Banaba Chintu belongs to is that of Gabunga of Buaya in Busiro County. Mukwanga was a very wise person and full of humor in speech. Look, Banaba Chintu spent two days with the would-be martyrs before getting martyred at Namugongo on 3rd June 1886, which was Ascension Thursday. Banaba Chintu learned the Our Father prayer in just a day and the morning and the evening prayers in just three days. Together with Matthias Mulumba, we were baptized on Sunday 28th May 1882 at Nabulagala. Arrested on Wednesday at around 2 p.m. 26th May 1886, Banaba Chintu was led to Namugongo. He was burnt alive on a session Thursday, the 3rd June 1886, at around 1 p.m. Matia Murumba started suffering on the 27th of May 1886 and he died on the 30th of May the same year and they cut pieces of flesh from all over his back throwing the pieces on the fire. It was the first day the 27th of May when they did all this but he died on the 30th of May 1886 which was a Sunday. Some people were passing and they heard a voice in the in the bush here. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Like Christ did when he was dying. Thirsty, thirst, thirst. Looking there, they found Matthias Mulumba dying. And it's said, it's recorded, that it was around, around 9 a.m. On the fateful day of 3rd June 1886, Charles Swanga was dragged by St. Cole for about 50 years to where he was executed. Charles Irwanga was martyred here. Exact, inside exactly where the altar is, is the very spot where Charles Irwanga was burnt alive to death on the 3rd of June 1886. Saint Charles Irwanga, patron of the youth and lay apostolate. The ninth to be muttered exactly where the basilica at Namugongo is situated. Charles Rwanga was born to Mabingo and his wife Gocharia in Birinzi around 1861. Birinzi is today in Luvule Parish in the Diocese of Masaka. Still a child, Rwanga was raised at his in-laws home. His name was Juan Maurugungu. It was on 15th November 1885 that Ruanga was baptized Charles by Pere Giraud at the age of 24. Others baptized on the same day were Bruno Serunkuma, 29, and James Buzabaliao, 24. Senkole, who was assistant chief executioner and who was about 40 years, refused to work under Charles Ruanga, a boy of only 23 years. Luanga time and again reminded Senkole of the king's order, but the latter would not listen. A meeting was convened by Luanga and Senkole was fined. As the would-be matters were being led to the execution site at Namugongo, Nachianja, Senkole hit on each one's head as a signal of their death. Reaching at Charles Luanga, he said, Yes, you are to die but I am to kill you physically. Senkole reminded Charles Wanga how much he got humiliated towards the end of 1884, a thing that had taken place more than two years earlier. Senkole dragged Charles Wanga for about 50 years to where the latter was executed. The others, including Kizito, Mugaga and others, continued to the official execution site, leaving Luanga muttered exactly where the altar is in the basilica at Namgongo. He was burnt for a second time on 4th June 1886. We have a relic of St. Charles Luanga at Namgongo, Lubaga, 
and elsewhere. Charles Swanga was murdered at Namugongo, where the basilica is, at the age of 25. I admire St. Charles Swanga, who, a young man, powerful, exemplary, you know, he had it all. But in a time when you don't expect anything good, many times the young people are not taken serious. But Charles Rwanga proved himself by what he was doing as a leader, which came at a cost. The execution of 26 Christians at Namugongo on June 3, 1986, was the climax of the campaign against the converts. Saint Mbaga to Zinde, patron of religious vacations. Born to Wagumbuzi Katamiza and his wife Bakuamumani at Lumuli, Buyonga, Busiro County in the Archdiocese of Kampala today. To Zinde was taken to the palace to serve as a page at the age of 14. It was Mukajanga who presented to Zinde to Kabakamwanga. Mbaga to Zinde belonged to the Lang Fish. Mamba Kakoboza clan. It was Kikonyogo, the grandfather of Tuzinde, who made a blood pact with Salasamba Kayongo, the father of Gombia. Gombia was the father of Mukajanga. It was blood pact that made Mukajanga and Tuzinde almost brothers. The fact explains why people have always thought that Mukajanga was the father of Tuzinde. Tuzinde grew up at Mukajanga's home. When Kikonyogo, the father of Wagumbuluzi, died, it was Mbaga Tuzinde that succeeded him, thus making Tuzinde grandfather to Mukajanga's home. It further explains why Mukajanga tried as much as possible to save the life of Mbaga Tuzinde during the great persecution of 1886. <laughs> Tuzinde was a trustworthy person. Whenever Charles Stwanga had to go outside the palace, it was always Tuzinde to see to it that no meat was stolen out of the palace. When people came to him asking for some meat, the spontaneous answer would be the meat belongs to the slaughterer. Have you ever seen me slaughtering? He thus was nicknamed Mbaga. This is the Mbaga to Zinde, our martyr. Minutes before the would-be martyrs were sentenced by King Mwanga at Munyanya, to Zinde was baptized by Charles Swanga. It was very early in the morning of 26th May, 1886. At Buwate were relatives of Mukajanga whom he thought would convince Mbaga to Zinde to abandon the faith and save his life. They failed to convince him. Mbaga stuck on his decision, which doctors too tried and tried to convince him. All was in vain. An executioner was instructed by Mukajanga to hit Mbaga on the neck with a big stick. On the watchtower. Sai Gwangi, but then Sabab Sabi, Gabwa Gani, I think at the Chinese of Jemira Sakabaka, Jagano Mugamba of Kamide, Asabi, Mukuba Kabarango, Saga item Brumi Gamuru. The ticket is Sai Gwangi. Saba. He was hit dead and then was thrown on the fire at Namugongo, Nachianja, on 3rd June 1886. Mbaga Tuzinde is the patron of religious vacations. Seminarians, novices, postulants, and aspirants. <laughs> Saint Kizito, patron of children, 
Kizito was born to Lukomero, Wangambira, of the Lang Fish Clan, Emamba, at Waluleta, now Kasana Luero Diocese, in Bulemezi County, around 1861. Kizito is the most intimate friend to the faith of the animating diocese today. He was baptized along with Javira, Mugagga, Mbaga Tuzinde, and Karoli Weraba. As they moved from Munyonyo to Namugongo execution site on May 26, 1886, young Kizito showed no sign of fear. Instead, he got fan out of the way they were moving tied on one single rope. They passed by Father Mapera, who wrote in his diary, They have arrested our Christian boys, and appears they are going to kill them. They tied them too close to at Namugongo na Chianja on Ascension Day, 3rd June, 1986. Kizito is the patron saint of children under the age of 14. <laughs> saint Achilles Chiwanuka, patron of journalists. Chiwanuka was born at Lugana in Singo County to Chaze Sewakuka Nsawunkade of the Scully Ant Eater Clan Olugave and Nasaza Talida of Fumbe Clan Sivet Kat. Chiwanuka went to the palace along with his cousins Chibuka and Chigongo Semindi Ruinga, who sometime later became the Kasuju, County Chief of Usuju during the reign of King Chua II. Arriving at the palace, the three friends met the hospitality of Charles Ruanga, who taught them religion immediately. Father Mapera baptized them during the night of 16th November 1885. Chiwanuka was martyred on 3rd June 1886 at the age of 17. He was burnt alive with others at the official execution site Namugongo. Saint Mukasa Chiwawanvu, patron of hotels, bars, restaurants, and the like. Belonging to the sheep clan, Indiga, Chiwawanvu was born of Lumanika, Saint Yahweh Kirwa, and his wife, Malok Vau. A Musoga mother at Nakasaula in the present day Nagarama Parish, Chagwe County, Lugazi Diocese. Due to his humor, politeness, prudence, and friendliness, Chiriwawanvu earned himself popularity, and the king entrusted him with the responsibility of serving food. Oftentimes, there used to be meetings of various kinds. On the fateful day when the martyrs were sentenced to death at Munyonyo on 26th May 1886, Chiriwawavo had been in the Chimbale prison in Munyonyo for a number of days for hitting Javira, who had insulted him. So Chiriwawavo missed on being baptized by Charles Ranga. He instead got baptism of the blood. <laughs> Saint Adulfas Mukasa Ludigo Tebeyalirwa, patron of farmers and herdsmen. Ludigo was born to Bamwe Sekera and his wife Kajote at Misazi in Toro. Ludigo, at the age of 19, was captured along with his mother from Bunyoro around 1881 and presented to Kabaka Mutesa I to serve as a page. 
In the palace, Ludigo was in charge of the king's gardens and orchards, while at the same time he was an excellent herdsman. Ludigo was one of the 18 people that were baptized by Father Mapera during the night of 16th November 1885. Seven of the 18 became martyrs. From the Kimbale prison, Munyonyo, Ludigo walked all the way to Namugongo and was burnt alive with 11 others at the official execution site on Ascension Day, 3rd June 1986. <laughs> Saint Anatoly Chiriguajo, patron of hunters and herdsmen. In 1860, Anatoly Chiriguajo was born to Sita at Kinyira village in Buyaga County in the kingdom of Winyoro in the area also known as Bubango, which is about six miles to Bujuni Parish in Hoima Diocese. In 1876, Bubango was raided by a group of Baganda and many people were captured. While men and women were captured, a lot of property was looted. It was during this raid that Anatoly, Rakai Kara and Bigasaki were brought to Buganda. Anatoly Chiriguajo was baptized by Father Mapera on 16th November 1885. Anatoly Chiriguajo was burned to death with 11 others at the official execution site of Namgongo, Nachianja. Saint Mukad St. James Buzavariao Kalumba, patron of merchants and cooperatives. Buzavariao Sebaiga of the White Monkey Clan, Enge, was born of Sebike J. Kabazi, Kalindirizi, Rambuzabujo of the Grasshopper Clan. In Senene at Tabazimu Kiswa village in Gori Parish, Kampala at Diocese, Maokota County, between 1856 and 1861. Buza Variao was sent to Princess Namukabia at Wamala. Buza Variao, with the then Prince Mwanga's secretary, began getting instructions on the Catholic Church and faith. He later left the palace for Andrea Kagua's home, Natete. On 3rd June 1886, as they proceeded to the execution site, Namugongo, James Buzavaria cautioned Simeon Sebuta not to abandon his faith. It was customary to give a sip of the local brew to one that was about to be executed. James Buzavaria was not given because he had time and again called the soldier Agents of Satan. Buza Variao was murdered on Ascension Thursday, 3rd June 1886 while praying. <laughs> Saint Javira, patron of traffic, son of Semalogo Mubiru of the Langfish Mamba clan. Saint Javira's father, Semalogo Mubiru 
was a witch doctor. In the palace, Javira knew from where and when the rainbow was coming. Now, seeing Kabakamwanga scourging Dennis Sebukwawo during the evening of 25th May 1886, Javira, Mugaga, and Dennis Kamuka got very frightened. They fled to their friend Matthias Kisule at Nadete. However, they returned to Munyonyo very early in the morning on 26th May 1886. It was Charles Luanga Mbaga, Tuzinde, Kizito, and Karoli Weraba. It was then Kabakamwanga convened a meeting in which he sentenced Christians to death. After about a journey, Saint Ambrosio Chibuka, patron of the youth. Chibuka of the Lugave clan, Scully Aunt Eater, was born to Kisule and his wife Wampeo at Batuzaliso in Singo County. Ambrosio Chibuka and Archie Chiwanuka were cousins. Ambrosio was named by his father, Kate Kalunda Gana. Because at one time, Chibuka was the only boy among about 30 sisters. Baptized 16th November 1886 by Father Mapera at Nalukolongo. When Chibuka heard of Kabaka Mwanga's intention to kill the Christians, he went back to bid farewell to his parents and others. He emphasized his intention of not abandoning the Catholic faith to the dismay of his people. Lwaji tumute tumuumuliza wano. Laba, laba, laba. Engaja beno. Emponga byoya. Yo wa. Soko mbulio. Laba. Pomuje muono. Zeta. Muleke. Wai senkole. Wanji. Senkole. Wanji. Una amalako. Saida jana. Labanga manya gamuwede. Kwa kwa kwani? Nze chibuka sebo. Chibuka. Chibuka, <laughs> Let's see what the ding under Zan. It up to Wakabaka, Wakabaka, Limuka, Wakabaka, Wakabaka, He was later burnt alive to death on the 3rd June at Namugongo execution site. <laughs> Saint Bruno Serunkuma, belonging to the Sheep Clan. Serunkuma was a Muganda from Buddu County. He was born to Namun Julidwa, a then county chief of Buddu County, and his mother was in Dibaliza. When he became a Catholic, he strove to master his temper and to control his passions. On one occasion, King Mwanga gave him two beautiful girls in appreciation for his good service at the palace, whom he gladly took home as his wives. 
When his fellow Catholics, Luanga and Andrew Kagwa in particular, learned of it, they rebuked Serunkuma for the illegal marriage. He adhered to his friend's rebuke and went to Father Lugard and confessed. Then he abandoned the two wives and his property. He was burnt alive in Namgongo on Ascension Thursday, 3rd June, 1886, at the age of 30. He is the patron saint of penitence, lust of flesh, drinking, violence, and unlawful marriages. <laughs> <laughs> the last person killed in this crusade was Jean Maria Mzei, who was beheaded at Mengo on January 27, 1987. She was martyred here on the 27th of January, 1887. During the Great Persecution, he was upcountry towards Tanzania. When he came back, he was informed that his colleagues had been martyred. He wanted to go and present himself to the king, but the missionaries reminded him that he had promised on the day he was baptized, on the 1st of November 1885, that he would not do anything good before consulting them. Two, on that day, the 1st of November 1885, he had vowed to be obedient. There came a time when the missionaries said, okay now, you can't go. He was arrested and he was carried down here. That was a swamp down there. Exactly here, he had his head cut off. After doing that, they threw his body in the, in the spring of water. At the same time, there was a big swamp here when people came to collect water from here and they were getting a smell. The women told them, yes, they threw somebody there. Checking there, it was the body of John Mary Kiwanuka Mosei. He was the last one to be killed. John Mary Kiwanuka Mosei was born near the border of Tanzania and Uganda. But he was brought here and he died here at the age of 35. Now this water it looks different now. People come here and take this water and many of them come back to testify. I've be, I came ill, I came sick, but I've been cured of this. John Mary Kwanuka Musei, Pray for us. Christian converts followed to die for their belief in a country which was exposed to Christianity for less than 10 years defies logic. For their bold choice, they died Christian martyrs. It is a, a miracle how these people who had been instructed for just a short time, how they could keep their faith and especially when you think of the position of the Kabaka, nobody until then would dare to contradict the Kabaka. Kwe kujema kwa ni kusoso kwa uwa ni Mbuganda. Kabaka kwa ni Kabaka wabwe. What Kabaka said was final. But these young people, after instructions, for a, a short time, they were able to say, Kabaka, we respect you, but our choice is this. Exceptional in the way they joined the faith, but also more exceptional in the way they showed commitment at a short time. And for me as a whole, and from that's the story of who a saint is, you know, they are saints who live pure, holy lives. The 22 known Catholic martyrs were declared blessed by Pope Benedict XV in 1920. 
This is one of the key steps in the Catholic tradition that eventually leads to canonization. They were later canonized by Pope Paul VI on October 18th, 1964, putting them on the official list of saints in the Catholic Church. This is a process whereby a Catholic in his or her lifetime or during his death or her death and even after that he, this person had a reputation for his, heroic, for his or her heroic virtues and for martyrdom. This beatification and canonization is a process whereby the Catholic Church presents somebody as a model, as an example to be imitated by the other Christian people so that they may also be, they may live heroic virtues of Christian life and that they may also be like martyrs. Canonization has to be preceded by a miracle. In the case of the Uganda martyrs, it was the miracle of Rubaga. The miracle of Rubaga was the cure of two of our sisters, missionary sisters of Our Lady of Africa, commonly known as White Sisters, Sister Richildis and Sister Aloise, both members of our congregation, were miraculously cured of bubonic plague in de December 1941. And it was this miracle which, uh, which was put forward as a first-class miracle and which, through which the martyrs were uh, canonized. And uh, the, the doctor in attendance was a certain Dr. Ahmed, who was a Muslim, and he consulted with another doctor, Dr. Reynolds, a Protestant, and both of them testified that the two sisters who had the bubonic plague would not otherwise have been cured. They had tried out the best known medicines at the time, and these were ineffective. Although the miracle took place in 1941, the actual canonization took place in 1964 in Rome. In attendance were two Ugandan bishops, Archbishop Dr. Joseph Chuanuka of Rubaga Archdiocese and Bishop Adrian Kivumbi Dungu of Masaka Diocese. The canonization of the Uganda martyrs had a special privilege. I think a rare privilege because canonizations have been made with a few bishops. But you imagine that this canonization of the Uganda martyrs was attended by at least 3,000 bishops. And then I took the, the, the missile before the Holy Father, we used, when, the, when the, the Holy Father was saying a prayer, then we would, we would stand before him, my Archbishop holding the candle and myself holding the missile. Another interesting thing, the Ugandan drum was introduced in the liturgical service in St. Peter's. Uh, a group was a group was studying in uh, Switzerland, and this group came with the late Joseph Chagambidwa, and they brought their instruments, and they were given a special place in the basilica, and for the first time, <laughs> a drum was used in St. Peter's Basilica. Rather than deter the growth of Christianity, the martyrdom of these early believers seems to have sparked its growth instead. More than 105 people were baptized during the very week. Charles Luanga on the very day, on the ve during the very evening, Joseph Makasabal Kudembe uh, was martyred here. On the 14th of November, the wife of Andrea Kagua, the martyr, 
delivered. And the girl was baptized on the 15th, the very day. That's the Maria Aliwonya. During the very week, on the 19th of November, 1885, the very first ladies in Uganda to be baptized were baptized. The very first ladies to be baptized. The wife of Andrea Kagwa, the martyr, Claire Batude Nakazibwe, then Eugenia, and another one, Monica. Those were the very first ladies to be baptized in Uganda. But it took place during the very week Joseph Makasabali Kudembe got martyred here. As has been observed in many other instances, the blood of the martyrs proved to be the seed of faith. Christianity is now the dominant faith in Buganda and Uganda as a whole. We see the, uh, the place where the remains of the pioneer missionaries, the first missionaries here in Uganda, uh, where they are buried. Uh, and as you see, you have the first one there, who was the first bishop in Uganda, uh, Archbishop Leo Livignac. Uh, he is there, uh, and also uh, he was not only the first bishop here in Uganda, but he afterwards was elected as the superior of the missionaries of Africa, and that's when he left and went back to Algeria. Then we have Mapera on the other side, uh, who is really the apostle of Uganda, so his remains are there. Then we have uh, Amas here, uh, who is also uh, with Mapera. They were the first two to arrive here. Uh, and then we have here uh, Ludovic Giro, uh, who, was, who is also uh, here. But in fact, him, we don't have his remains here because we could not get the remains uh, from the place where he had been buried. And then uh, you have Barbo, uh, also his remains which are there. Now of all these, it is only Mapera who died here, uh, who died here in this country uh, at Nabunya. They are great people. Then were followed by the Catholic missionaries who walked far and wide to reach the people with the good news of salvation. We should all ever be grateful to them and there is no better way of being grateful than that of being faithful to the message that they proclaimed. It's our turn to take that good turn back to the rest of the world, even in Europe, where today uh, many people are in search of missionaries. And we want to thank and credit many Af sons and daughters of Africa that are preaching the gospel to many other lands and taking that message seriously that to be a missionary you don't belong to any color, but you have to be on fire with the love of the Lord and the fellow human beings and give, up, uh, give them what they need. From servants to martyrs to saints, but of what relevance are our own Ugandan saints to us in our lives? This was the first for modern Africa and a source of pride throughout the continent. When I got in church, there is an old woman who told me that you better go to Rubaga Road, there is this holy water. Sometimes even children, in case a kid is not performing well in class, you can pick this water, you give the kid while praying together with St. John Maria Musei, then that kid will get some improvement. Through John Maria Musei we have got many, we have got healed, we have got delivered out of strong spiritual attacks. We always use this water in, in, in houses, Karoli Wanga, Mwenyu Miriza Munyo, Kubanga, Omuraba, Omuntu Muduga, Gatil Futu, Tokuvet, the Tumani, Abantava, Mikis, Abetua Savanga, Nukura Noven, Atuba Sava, Jetuba Savanga, Veru, Nukura Muduga, Vungata, Vietla Munju Yangi, Murujo Wafe, Kanibas at Dibimba Mani, Nemu Chikacha, Futubo Gerako, Ninda Banga, Avira Mujaluf. I think 
kaloli wanga inze wendi wano kwe gama mpulida esanyu ngali amanyi nyo chukwata gana ne kaloli wangu kubane wengena ne mpulida wa mwuseo ba uwa 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 nenjo gena ntisibu kabidizi wa mjulizi e chintu e chidi nge chitono ne e chida ganti sicha sovola kubula newe ba ngambuli de mwusiki ye mjulizi wetuwe nyumiriza amwe nyo wane wafe kubwe chisoka areta tufuna wano abalamazi okuva e Tanzania abava e Rwanda bava mu bitundu bya Uganda ebyenja ulo nebajja wano buli mwezi gwa musangu wiki esoka Mujuli zibali ku dembe yali musajja wa amani nga mukuku tivu nyo era ba mocha nga tati dena amu era ba mocha ano mukatale ka faka sent bali ku dembe bali ku dembe mogera konga omujulizi Na kugamba ya tuwe chokula mila kontinu kwa ukugobela muka mafe yezu kilistu kwa ya fili le dini. Kwa kugamba na batu wa watu soka wa watu soka woko. Bala banga akatalo kayu to wino msajyo we Kenya. Ngo mjulize ya yu omsayu kwa omsayu olo kubela katonda aliwami. Mwasala nechitese wako Mwake ntukabula mweli nyari omjuli zoe bali kudembe Bali kudembe ya limu sajia mruwani dizi wa dembe Raya nsunga luwachi itanga bali sajia bali kudembe Ya limu sajia mruwani dizi wa dembe mkasera I was born physically rame Now the whole body was somehow handicapped Most of the bones were soft Very very soft and as such I could not sit or crawl or walk. In 1961, when the Bishop of Masaka declared to the, to the Christians a, a crusade, asking all the Christians to go on their knees and pray to the Uganda matters so that they may perform miracles, so that the church may, can, may rely on that miracle to canonize them, by coincidence, the parishioners picked me from my grandmother and they took me to the parish and they started a novena. When the novena had proceeded about to four days to the sixth day, a miracle happened. They used to leave me in the church lying at the day. They used to send a girl to correct me from the, the, the church and take me to the convent. On that sixth day of the novena, by coincidence, when the girl came to correct me from the church, she found me already crawling at the, at, at, at the entrance of the church. I would like to show you how my legs used to be. As I told you that they were crippled like this. But by coincidence, by divine intervention, by the intercession of the Uganda matters, they returned to the normal position. They used to be like this. But by, by prayers, they helped to straight back to the normal position. At around 4 to 5, a, a miraculous miracle came to the full swing. The, the moment of crawling, opened the movement of walking and the running. The, the, by this miracle, the church took it as a divine intervention on behalf of the intercession of the Uganda mothers. Uh, the testimony which I'm going to give is about my son who was kidnapped in the year 2010. He was kidnapped as he was going to do his school work at Mulago. A gentleman came and wanted to pretend to want to be helped. As my son's name is Andrew, as Andrew was looking at the paper, the gentleman pulled out a handkerchief and passed it over his nostrils. He started feeling weak and by the, he had, the man held him by the arm and took him into a car where he lost his consciousness. So, 
in the night he woke up to find himself in a forest. He climbed a short tree and slept there. In the morning he got down and started detecting the sounds of vehicles. Then he went to the road, but because he was weak and hungry, he fell asleep. We were looking for the boy, and my, my husband went to many hospitals, many police stations, and even the mortuary. He was not there. So Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night, we said, let us write my citation asking for St. Andrew Kagwa's intercession so that the boy could be found alive or dead. We came to church, the intercession was read. People wept for some minutes. Then Reverend Father expedited on the circuit, told, calmed us down and told us, no, Andrew Kagwa will be found. She called her father. Father went to Naksadem B, our elder, our elder son. When they reached there, they found the boy and they proved that that, that is their son. That was day four. He was really very hungry, very thirsty, very weak. We really make it and find it that it was a miracle. It was God's miracle, but through the intercession of Saint Andrew. It's a great privilege for me to be on that land where Uganda matters have first received their catechesis and as well their baptism. Try our best as well to promote devotion to the Uganda matters. Kwansia Nongondwe was a brother to my great-grandfather and uh, my great-grandfather uh, like Ponsia Nongondo was among those first uh, Baganda to embrace Christianity. And we are very proud of him. Uh, and uh, for us, every year, we make a pilgrimage uh, to, his, uh, uh, to the place where he was killed in uh, uh, Chamula, Takajunge, uh, near Munyonyo. Uh, so surely we feel proud uh, of uh, Ponsia Nongondwe. Uh, but also it's a challenge for us. Uh, it's a challenge for us to see how we too can uh, continue in his footsteps, uh, being faithful, uh, faithful to our Christian faith.